Hi guys, Ms. Marusik here, and today I want to talk to you all about memorizing polyatomic ions. Now, polyatomic ions are ions where we have several elements together that have either lost or gained some electrons, and so they have a charge. And you can see some of the ones that we're going to make you memorize here on this list, um, and you can see that it's got two different symbols here, two different elements. Some of the elements have a subscript with it. And then we have a charge that shows, like for example here, with a negative charge that we've gained some electrons. Now, these are one of those things that are really tricky for students to memorize just because they seem totally random. They won't be random eventually, especially when we learn to name and write formulas of compounds. But for now, it just seems like we're having you memorize random stuff. So I want to kind of give you some tips and tricks that you can use to help yourself try and get to used to memorizing these. Um, now, I'm going to show you a trick that works for the eights. Okay, and you notice the eights all end with the eight name. So we'll talk about some of these other ones here in just a little bit, but I want to talk about the trick first. Um, and you see I have some really random looking clip art pictures here. I've got a camel. I've got a clam that has an inch measurement above it. I've got some crepes. Makes me hungry here. Um, and then a phoenix sign. And you're like, what the heck do these have to do with polyatomic ions? Well, uh, I'm going to write down a saying that you can use for the eight polyatomic ions. Okay, for the ones that have eight at the end. So here's the saying. Nick, the baby camel, ate an inch clam and crepes. For supper in Phoenix. So again, Nick the baby camel ate an inch clam and crepes for supper in Phoenix. Now, let me show you how this works, okay? If you remember us looking at that list just a minute ago, all of our polyatomic ions had a first symbol to it and then an oxygen with it and then a certain number of oxygens with the charge. So how this works is the first letter of each of these main words here help us to know what element goes at the front. So like for example, this one is for nitrogen, okay? And we're gonna put some oxygens with it. So, so Nick is for nitrate polyatomic ion. And what I wanna do is I wanna put how many oxygens and the charge of that nitrate. So how it works, the consonants, N, C, and K, three of them. That tells you your number of oxygens. Now, your charge comes from how many vowels you have in it. Okay, so like for example here I have one vowel, so that means I have a negative one charge. Now, you could write just negative if it's negative one, or you could write negative one like that, or some teachers are really particular about you putting one negative, especially if you're taking AP or IB, um, because some books accept that as more proper format. Um, I'm okay with you putting negative one, but you may want to kind of double check and make sure with your teacher what they prefer you to put. All right, so there's for nitrate. Baby is for bromate. So I have B-R-O, okay? I have one, two, three consonants. We're going to go with Y being a consonant here. And one vowel, negative one. Okay, now there are three of these that all start with C. So we kind of have to be careful which one is for which. We have carbonate, we have chlorate, and we have chromate. Now, camel is going to be for carbonate, which starts with carbon. We have oxygens in it. We have specifically one, two, three consonants, so we have three oxygens. And then we have one, two vowels, so that's going to be a negative two charge there. Now, these are kind of what I like to call filler words, but actually the eight is kind of helpful because that reminds us that these are all for the eight polyatomic ions, okay? Inches for iodate. So I'm going to have my iodine, okay? I, I have O's. I have one, two, three O's for the three consonants. And then I have a negative one vowel, okay? Clam is for chlorate. So I have C-L-O for the chlorine and the oxygens. And then I have one, two, three consonants and one vowel, negative one, okay. Crepes is for chromate, okay. Now, chromate has chromium in it, and we have oxygen, and we have one, two, three, four consonants, 
and one, two vowels of negative two. Okay, so now, supper. Now we get into some long ones, right? Supper is for sulfate. Okay, so we have S and O, so sulfur and oxygen. We have one, two, three, four consonants, and one, two vowels, so negative two. And then finally, Phoenix. Now, be careful. Like I said, Phoenix is a hard city to spell, so you got to kind of be careful here with the spelling. Uh, but it stands for phosphate. So that starts with phosphorus. We have oxygens. We have one, two, three, four oxygens, and one, two, three vowels for our charge of negative three. Now, like I said, this works for the eights. But there were more on that sheet that we gave you, and so you kind of have to make sure you know how to get to the other ones. But for the eights, this is super helpful to figure out those consonants in charge. So let me go back here for just a minute to our chart that we were looking at before. And I want to kind of show you how you can get to some of these other polytomic lines. Uh, the saying works for all of these eights, okay? These alternative polytomic lines, which are very similar in the name, are only different by the number of oxygens. So if you notice, as I go from bromate to per bromate or per iodate or per chlorate, the only difference is that these have one more oxygen than the eights did. So as you go from eight to per eight, we gain an oxygen. Now, as we go down to the ites, so to nitrate to nitrite or bromate to bromide, all of these have one less oxygen than the eight did. So as you go from eight to ite, you lose an oxygen. And then as you go all the way down to hypoite, okay, you notice we went bromate to hypobromite or iodate to hypoiodite, your number of oxygens decreases by two when you make that jump. So like for example, here we went from three oxygens to only one oxygen. And when I only have one oxygen, I don't have to put the subscript with that. I would just leave it blank. Uh, you can see way down here on say, for example, something like sulfate, when it goes to its hypo, hyposulfite, we jump from four all the way down to two. Now obviously there are some blanks on here, some X's. Those are ones that either aren't very common, we don't commonly use, or maybe they don't fit the format, or they don't exist. There are some polyines that are not stable, and so therefore they wouldn't exist. So those you don't have to memorize. Now, I will tell you this, this works for the um, per eights, ites, and hypo eights that we have taught you. Uh, there are other polyatomic ions out there that don't necessarily fit that plus one oxygen, minus one oxygen kind of trend, but it does work for a whole bunch of them. So whatever ones they work for, I say, hey, let's use it, right? Now, there are some other polytomic ions way down here at the bottom. I don't have any good little saying or trick for them. There's a few of them that if you really look at the polytomic ion, it kind of makes sense um, when you look at the name. For example, hydroxide has hydrogen and oxygen in it, and that makes sense based on the hydro and the ox in there. Um, also here on cyanide, you can kind of see the C and the N in there, and you can see that that is in part of the polytomic ion. Uh, also with hydrogen carbonate, which is sometimes called bicarbonate, it's in baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, um, you notice that it looks like we've combined together a hydrogen ion, which is a plus one because it's in group one, uh, along with a carbonate, which is CO3 negative two. And when I combine those two together, what happens is the plus one and the negative two give me that negative one charge. So I can kind of figure that out based on combining together those particular ions. Now we only have one polyatomic ion that we're expecting all to learn that has a positive charge to it, and that is ammonium. And what has happened there is when those group together, they actually lose an electron. Notice that all the rest of them gained electrons, which is why they have a negative charge. So you may kind of want to be careful for him. Uh, he's kind of weird with that positive charge, and the rest of them all have the negatives. So hopefully you found this helpful to kind of start getting used to using and memorizing those polyatomic ions. Again, remember our little saying of Nick the baby camel ate an inch clam. And crepes for supper in Phoenix. See those pictures? They totally make sense now, right? We have the camel, the clam, the crepes, the Phoenix. So hopefully that helps you starting to memorize these. Flashcards work well too, but I find the saying to be most helpful to remembering all of those charges and number of oxygens. So again, consonants are your oxygens. Vowels are your charge. Good luck, and I'll see you in class. Bye, guys.